call to, to order the January meeting of in the first meeting of 2015 of the Finance Committee. I'm not sure if y'all are here for the same meeting I am, but there's a bunch of you here today. Uh, Happy New Year. Must be more on the agenda than I thought. Uh, we will begin as usual with items on the consent. Are there any items that anyone would like to remove? Ms. Adams. Thank you. Uh, C1. C1. C4. C4. C6. C6. C8. 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 C11. C11. And I'm done. Ms. Burke, do you have any? Uh, yes. I have C5A. C5A. Uh, anyone else at the table would like to move? I'm going to ask for C7. Do I hear a motion to approve the balance? Motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda. Mr. Burke, one second. All in favor say aye. aye. Those likewise, those are approved. We will start with C1. If the secretary read that, please. Resolution authorizing an, an extension of a lease agreement with KDM of Wilmington, LLC, providing a site for a leaf mulching facility located in the North Ward. Uh, Ms. Adams, I think you asked for this one. Yes. Uh, is this something new or is this something we've always done? It's the turn. House Member Adams, members of the committee, we've done this um, previously when we had a need for a facility in the northern portion of the city. So this is a renewal of an existing contract. And existing lease. And excuse me, where would this be? On 32nd Street across the street from the facility. Oh, so I, I don't know why I thought it was off a of shore fair because you know they used to do drop the mulch there, the leaves and everything. So we're talking about putting a facility there permanently. No, ma'am. Temporarily. We did an additional two year lease okay. that we have had for the last two years. The shore fair facility has had problems because of uh, stormwater runoff. Yeah. And so we are no longer doing it there. Able to use that. Thank you. Thank you very much. I move for approval. Mr. Turner, I do have a question. How large is this piece of property? I had to ask Mr. Borling. I'm not Mr. Borling, sure. Are exactly. you stand up back there? How large acres, feet is the property? The one on C1, the one for the lease on 32nd no, Street? Three acres. Three acres. Property. And do we have the. Let me direct this back to Mr. Turner. We had one way up on 52. Because it was next to a business of a gentleman I know who called me on it. Do we still use that one? We still have that one. It's uh, geographically not as desirable as this location for the central portion of the city, but yes, we still do have it and still use it for do the you northern portion of the city. Okay, yes, way up to 52 in Form, form 52 up that way. And yes, ma'am, Ms. Burke. Now, what's the investment that one up there? How much money? Utility Commission purchased that one. I'll have to go back and find out how much we purchased it for, but we do own that one. We're not leasing. Thank you. Any other questions? This is for two years? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I know we have to have it, so I'm certainly going to vote for it, but I would hope in 24 months. I've got a couple of ideas where we might be able to put this that would save us a little bit of money, but I will get with the uh, staff separately on that. We have a motion to second. All questions are answered. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed likewise. That is approved. That was C1. We will now go to C5. Ms. Burke, you have this one full? Yes. Oh, excuse me. C4. I'm sorry. I did skip that one. C4, if you'll read that one next. Resolution for giving the outstanding balance of an economic development loan for Get Interactive Incorporated in the amount of $50,000. Ms. Adams, you have this one full. Yes, I'd just like the finance to put together a report to uh, disperse to council of how many forgivable loans, Mr. Uh, Page, have we forgiven, let's say, in the past two years, and their amounts and the parties that we forgave them for. And if they have a history of us forgiving loans, and yeah, this is going to be a pretty little big spreadsheet. But I also need to know uh, what the loans were for basically just something in a you know bite not a whole lot of information just tell me you know specifically what it was for but again i need to know how many for the past two years and the amounts and the history and for what 
Uh, I do have more of a comment. Is Mr. Harrison here by chance? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Don't have a question for you, just the gentleman I figured you might be here. And I have talked to Mr. Harrison and with the staff about this earlier. My concern about it is it kind of the unofficial way it was done. If we, I don't have trouble contracting with local suppliers, but in this case, it was for, I guess, an in-kind service in lieu of a lease payment or a loan payment. And I think when we do things like that, we have we should document better exactly what we're getting and, and, and putting a value on it. Because what happened here is, is we did that for the first two years, but then we continued it just kind of without a piece of paper, and it got kind of messy in there. As to what, what should have been done in, with that yet. So, uh, well, Mr. Chair, that's yeah. why I'm, I'm now as part of the Finance Committee. It's, it's even not for council. The Finance Committee now needs to be brought up on these forgivable loans that yeah. we are, we're beginning, since I've been on the council now, we're beginning to see more and more of that. And I think as a council, we need to help our peers understand where we are with yeah. the process. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Believe it or not, yes, I had an indirect conversation with the city manager about some of the things and how we deal with this money. So it's yeah. just falling right now. Okay. Do you uh, have a motion on the item? Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed likewise. That passes. We will now go to C5. <coughs> Read that one, please. Consideration of items related to requests for financial assistance from Winston-Salem Business Incorporated. A, resolution approving an economic development loan to Wisby, location Union Cross Business Park, in the amount of $2.5 million. B, ordinance amending the project budget ordinance for the city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina for the fiscal year 2014-2015. Uh, before we get into this one, uh, Ms. Garrity, who would be the appropriate person to give us a kind of a two minutes on this? Mr. Page. Mr. Page, you want to just, I know we were briefed in private, but uh, if you will just fill everybody in, and this was in the paper the other day, so it might be some general questions out there. And it actually came to the Finance Committee last month as well, Council McCall. Um, but what this is, is a loan that will be made to the Winston-Salem Business Inc. The loans for $2.5 million. They will build a spec building um, in Union Cross Business Park, which is a 50 to 60,000 square foot spec building with a capacity of about 20,000 square feet additional um, expansion. The building will be on about six to seven acres in Union Cross Business Park. When the property is sold, the city will be repaid its um, money in full. Uh, Mr. Leake, I see you here. Can would you mind addressing the to the podium a second? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and Ms. I had a question, but Ms. Perk brought it up, so I'm gonna let you go first. Yes, this is one I pulled out for it to be discussed because oftentimes um, the public don't really get to see the whole picture of what's going on. And I had asked Mr. Page earlier to give me just a little information on the Union Cross Business Park, and I want you to understand this is not negative, this is positive. This is something that you can look at how this city has worked with private partnerships how to increase economic development. And I want you to know, and I think sometimes, Mr. City Manager, you don't put this big money in public, so people, these should not be in consent sometimes. They should be discussed at meetings like this, I do feel. Since 1997, the city has invested $2.5 million to this group for infrastructure improvement. In addition, the city has invested $1.98 million with six companies for infinity. The park has generated more than $130 million in investment in annual city property taxes exceed $700,000. And also, the total employees, I think you can do better than I talk about minority employment, we have a 1,142 with the 28% minorities and 24 females. Even though it may be a law that says we don't have to go but so far when we do things, I think when we put this kind of money in projects, we can go further to try to bring on minority involvement with jobs and opportunities because these are tax dollars that belong to all of us that we're putting back into the community. So, Mr. Chairman, I had that brought to the attention right. to show because I've got some more I'm going to bring up and how we're spending our money as we bring some of these items okay. this evening. And this is not to say 
is taking anything away from you, Mr. Lee, but you and I have had conversations before about the minority employment and even your office. Uh, you have, I believe, maybe one female mm -hmm. and two white males. Yes, ma'am. That's the total. And then I think that all of you different from that. Anytime you invest this kind of money, the money is green, but it's black and white and Hispanic and Asian, Greek and, and everybody else's money. And it needs to show this that it's okay. Mr. Lake, I had a question. If the city's doing this as a loan, will we be in first lien position on the property? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. One other term about that set building. We have one over there off of uh, Liberty. Yeah. And it, it, it is good if we can do a spec building to generate some more economic yeah. development in the area. Yeah. And that one the city actually owns. Yeah. Okay. And second, I'm, I'm assuming that property tax will be paid on the building. Yes. Okay. Those questions I had. Uh, I see all sorts of hands. I'll just yeah. start. I'm looking at Mr. Bessie first, so we'll start with you. Just a comment. Uh, I think it's failed. Before, you know, What's that? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's significant this is a straight up loan. The money would go back in for additional economic development when the building sold. Um, uh, second, I think that it's significant that this is uh, uh, justified in part by the fact it's 95% occupancy rate on the existing part. So the property's in demand. Uh, it's a spec building, but it's not a, a, it's not a wild you know, I'd kind of um, gamble. Uh, so. Under those circumstances, I think this is uh, a good investment of part of the money that um, uh, we got back from Dell and that we got in, in the that we're getting in the bonds that the voters approved. Thank you. I'll just go around the table. Mr. McIntosh, you had a question or comment? Uh, just quickly about what your expectations are in terms of the market demand for this. I mean, this is, I, I feel like the timing is very good to put this up. Market conditions seem to be favoring sellers versus buyers right now. I mean, we believe so. The, um, the last 36 months or so we've consumed in this city about a million and a half square feet of class a industrial space um, there hasn't been any speculative industrial space built to backfill that and so all the most of the good properties have been taken and and what's left has not been as attractive to companies that have inquired um, and wanted to potentially do business in winston-salem and so we believe uh, the timing is very good to build a building like this um, I wish I could build four or five buildings of all kinds of different sizes, but we just simply don't have the, the, the land available right now to do that. We own this site. This site fits this exact type of structure, and so that's why we brought this forward. This is going to be my next question. It, it seems like this is such uh, a softball coming to us. Why is, the pro why is not the private market doing what we're, what we're doing here? With well, again, it's, just, it's challenging for developers to be able to borrow the money to build speculative properties. The banks are required now federally to have you know, credit tenants lined up and this is truly speculative i don't have a project that needs this building today what i'm hoping is this building will generate right. the, the project that will come forward and want to take it thanks Ms. Mark, you have a um, just to follow up on that have there been in the last year or so requests to you all about something on this or oh yes ma'am there have been numerous inquiries for um, facilities this size and larger um, and we've been unable to, to satisfy those, those requests because we simply had nothing in inventory that met the requirements. Mr. Mayor? I think with Chairman Bob, I just took a question and a, and a comment. Um, obviously, you can't sell out of an empty wagon, but uh, the last time I looked, it's about 80% of the contacts were looking for existing buildings. Is that still pretty close? Higher than that. Higher yes, sir. It's probably closer to 90%. They start that way. And so what happens a lot of times is if you have a building uh, and the client comes to look at it, if that building doesn't work, at least you've got them here. So you can show them something else. You can offer to build them something. But the way the internet works now is you can search before you ever go look at a community. And if they don't have at least something that attracts your attention, they go on to the next location. There's too many places, too many places that have it. Yes, sir. Mr. James, you had your hand up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Leak, I'm gonna ask my question with my back to you. So please forgive me. No, sir, no problem at all. I will say I think we might have saved the best for last because uh, this area is in the southeast ward. And I will say, Mr. Leak, I think that you and, and all the folks who've been involved have done a good job with creating jobs and improving on economic development in that area. Uh, but I asked this question last time. I wanted to make sure that the answer uh, is still yet the same. 
we receive the money that we invest back upon the sale of the facility. In the event that the, that the facility isn't sold and it's leased, how are we then repaid? We'll find a developer who'll buy us out. There's a lot of companies that buy leased buildings with credit tenants in it. So we've already begun talking to companies that would have a potential interest in doing that. And, and, you're, and you're pretty confident that we won't have any problems? I'm very confident. Thank you. Okay. I, as an analogy, the green BB&T building was sold for the second time in three years. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people will buy property that's leased. It's, it's, it's basically it's a, it's a straight up for financing. It's an annuity, yeah. I'm gonna borrow money at four percent, and they gonna pay me so much a month. And if the numbers work out, that's what they pay you for. Right. All right. We have uh, any other questions, comments? I don't see any. Do I hear a motion? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise. We will now go to C six. If you'll read that one, please. And this, by the way, is the first cousin of what we just talked about. So Correct. Folks out there. Consideration of items related to requests for financial assistance from Winston-Salem Business, Inc., located in Enterprise Park Boulevard. Resolution approving financial assistance from Winston-Salem Business, Inc., in the amount of $500,000. B, ordinance amending the project budget ordinance for the city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, for the fiscal year 2014-2015. Lee, while you're standing up there, why don't you just introduce this? I one? figured I might better just stay. Save yourself a step. Yes, sir. What we're talking about here is, uh, and I believe there's a map in your package. There is. Um, I would refer you to that. I don't have one for the computer. I apologize to the fellow guests in the room. Um, Union Cross Business Park, when it was uh, started under construction probably 15, 16 years ago, um, we did it in stages, and um, the city and the county were both uh, involved in um, helping to, thank you, Dirk. Um, helping us to to build the infrastructure publicly owned infrastructure in the park the roads stormwater ponds sidewalks um, water sewer those types of things and um, we did develop what you see the majority of the park um, with the exception of the red road that you see here um, was not completed um, we ran out of infrastructure money if you will the park has been incredibly successful as you can see uh, all of those uh, what would appear to be either orange or um, reddish colored building uh, footprints that you see are all occupied buildings the only building that is in the park that is currently available is this building uh, right here um, so everything else is is occupied and and going full steam and um, what has now become a challenge for the park is really twofold one is traffic has become a bit of a challenge um, particularly during rush hour for the park uh, there's only one entrance in and out of the park for the majority of the tenants of the park and with Pepsi in the large building here on the lower part, um, now running Pepsi route trucks in and out of there twice a day, um, as well as the big trucks, it is a, a pretty busy place. Um, I'm meeting with DOT Wednesday to try to encourage them to look at signalization again on the entrance. Right now there is no light, traffic light, um, and uh, heretofore they've said there wasn't enough traffic to do that. Um, and so by building this piece of road, what that does is it opens the lower um, area here for um, folks that turn to go south out of the property. Now they stack up at the, at the main entrance, which is here, until the folks can turn left. So it's a safety issue. Um, but in addition to that, there's a 17-acre site here that we currently cannot access without building a road extension to get to it. And so I can't market and promote that without having some promise that there'll be a road so that they can get their people and their product in and out of that site. So it does two things. It, it provides safety um, outlet for the tenants of the park, and it also provides access to the basically the one remaining site of any consequence that will be in the park. Um, the front site here is where we're looking at for the secular building we just talked about. So um, that's why we're here. We're asking for essentially half the cost of the road, and we're talking to the tenants of the park about um, matching that half. Okay. Yes, Burke. Yes, ma'am. In talking with the tenants about matching, what, how, how have they been responding? Uh, they're waiting to see, um, I think, what the actual costs are going to be for the road. What we're doing is dealing right now on, on an estimate that's about three years old, um, and it's roughly 450 to 500,000. I'm sorry, for each that's about a million dollars to build the road. About 450 to 500,000 would be their match. We did have a meeting of the Tenants Association in December and floated the idea, and in general, 
uh, the, the attendees of the meeting, which was about two thirds of the owners, uh, so the others were not able to be there, um, are in favor of support, uh, would like to get this road built. Um, and we are doing um, individual meetings with the other third that weren't able to attend the meeting to talk to them. And we're just now scheduling those and those have not been complete. In general, though, they are extremely interested in getting this uh, road uh, built and, in, and also getting a signal put at the main entrance to try to help their, their, um, their employees. I know they're interested in getting it, but are they, do I hear you say they're interested with the final? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Adams. Uh, thank you, Chair. And I did like the part that was stated, uh, uh, Mr. Leak, that our money won't come until your money comes. Right. That's right. And I think that's what Ms. Burke and the public wants to hear. And uh, just wanted to make that statement. Okay. And any questions or comments? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Petty. Just one inquiry, and I really should have um, remembered to do this under the previous item, but it's, uh, it's still arguably irrelevant here. Um, I don't think our tree save ordinance applies to this kind of uh, construction, does it? Somebody help me. For the spec building? For, yes. The only trees on there are three foot tall scrub trees. That's a little area of wetlands in the back there that you're looking at that we won't disturb. Okay, you, you, you can't tell that from there. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's a wooded uh, I'll be happy to take you out there and show you, but it's it's what it was, was uh, essentially it was a prepared site that has um, volunteers that have grown up on it. Okay. No, There's no mature trees except down in the, the very, well, uh, right here. Um, in this corner would be some mature trees. And, and of course, we, we exceed the city ordinance in terms of landscaping for new trees, size of trees, and, and berming and that type of thing. And the reason I raise that is, of course, you have to clear the footprint, you have to clear the road. Uh, but um, there, are, there are ways that you can preserve what mature trees are left. Absolutely. Cases, and we would like to see that done when it's feasible and uh, given the demand that you need for the structure. Sure. Any other questions on this? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Montgomery. Yes, I, my questions are uh, similar to uh, what I brought up when we came in terms of information last time. Uh, it's still not necessarily all answered in the sense of I, I hear now, and I don't recall from the last conversation in reference to um, what I hear now in reference to the traffic concerns um, as well as safety in reference to portion of this in terms of the road because I think the last question I asked before was in reference to with the extension piece not not impacting the spec building thinking that's the bridge site for the spec building and supporting that piece of it but in reference to the road itself whether or not that portion should be joined together with the actual development of a building on that site at the proper time in terms of when there's a development of a building that should be built on that site to the size that that site can, can fit and that's still the, the question that I have in this process and is whether or not it's needed at this moment, at this time. And I, I know you talked about the traffic pieces in those portions, but I'm still, that's still my question is whether or not. For the 17 acre piece? This, this piece yeah, right, here. right the, the road, that, that um, piece. You know, we could, we could build that um, as a company built a building there. I think that most companies are gonna wanna see um, proof that it's going to be there, if not there at the time. In other words, they're looking for a developed property without the, the hope and the prayer that it does get completed at the same time that they do. And the only um, reason I didn't the only reason I interject there is if you look at the rest of the property, I think that's just from my perspective, and, I, and you may know a little better for me in terms of being in that place and, and dealing with some folks on an everyday basis, but I would see the park and, and see all that has already been invested to know that there's a commitment that if we build a spec building that yes this road is going to be a part of that that sure. development or, or whether or not it's packaged in that way that that's a well, commitment that happens um we have we have packaged it that way the last three or four years um, each time we have submitted that site to a company and shown them the opportunity um, the one of the first questions is obviously how we're going to access the site and how long will it take and and you know do we need to complete the whole road or just enough to get to the site and um, so I think, you know, for our purposes, um, completing the property, this completes it. There's not another road that we need. There's not another, you know, um, public investment that we need in, in this particular park. At this point, this is the last of the, of the involvement there. I think this completes the park and gives us that site, gives us full access to the site without question, and also does the other piece, which is the safety issue and the traffic issue. So it, this has come up in terms of 
Yes, sir, it has. Um, we we have been presenting this site um, well, ever since we built the park. I mean, we simply have not had anybody willing to speculate on it yet. And it's not the best site in the park either. That's why it hadn't developed. And I think, you know, by dressing it up and getting the road put in, getting the sidewalk in front of it, um, clearing it, getting it ready to go, I think it will be more attractive to a potential tenant or for another spec building by someone um, down the road uh, than it is currently. Motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those likewise. That is, and one, excuse me, one abstention. So that's three in favor, none opposed, and one abstention. We will now go to C7. The next item. Consideration of items related to 911 Public Safety Communication Center. A. Resolution authorizing the execution of a contract between the City of Winston Salem and Bell South Telecommunications LLC and AT&T. B, ordinance amending the project budget ordinance for the city of Winston-Salem, North Carolina for the fiscal year 2014-2015. Chief, come on up. Chief, could you give us just a one-minute introduction of what we're, what's involved here? Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, good afternoon, Mayor, uh, Mayor Pertan Burke, and Chairman, and all the members of the Finance Committee. Also, I have the Communications Center Director, Rebecca Bose. If there are some technical questions, but I'll give you a, some brief information about this overall, uh, just an overall uh, idea of what we want to do. This is to upgrade our uh, E911 system. The current system was installed in 2006. Now it's pretty much obsolete as far as uh, getting replacement parts, getting upgrades. Uh, this will enhance our E911 system where we can integrate uh, Texan, also video and we'll be get all the upgrades via the internet so we can be more efficient in our dispatching. Where is the 911, where would this be located, or where is it located? At the Public, At the public Safety, Safety Center. Is, would it still be there given the various changes we have coming? Yes. And secondly, I know the county also operates a 911. Have we ever discussed with them, I don't know if you can share software or hardware, even if you're in different buildings, I, I'm not an expert in that area. But have we explored anything with the county's 911? Well, we have. We we operate uh, two separate facilities, of course, but we do serve as backups to each other. If our system goes down, we can integrate with the county and vice versa. Mr. McIntosh. So the system that we're on now is not an, an IP or an internet protocol system. It's, no. um, are they lease lines or, or what's the technology we have lease lines you know the banking industry likes lease lines because it's impossible to hack them you can't get into it from a browser and, and go to it do we have do we have um, concerns about about safety about is there information that passes back and forth on this that would be critical or uh, proprietary to us that we're concerned about not necessarily most of the information that comes in the in the call center it could be uh, public information anyway so it's not really any critical information, critical as far as uh, detailed personal information. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Montgomery. The only thing that uh, Councilman McIntosh's question raises for me in, in is the question of overall security of the system, <laughs> just in light of all that we see happening around us, just making sure that whatever upgrades that we do, that, that <coughs> it, the, uh, the system itself uh, is not vulnerable to the extent we can uh, protect from going in, that, that we have the proper security measures so that when someone picks up the phone to call that if the system works as proper for as it should as, as going in. And so with this system, what are your thoughts on that? I'm aware that the Durham, Greensboro, the county already has this system. I've not, they've not told me of any type of you know, uh, security issues that they've had. So, I'm not aware of any. There are multiple agencies in North Carolina that have this exact same system. And all of the, that's what we're moving towards is the IP-based telephone system so we can share data with all the surrounding agencies. I've not been made aware of any type of security breach or anything of that nature. I know right now there's an, um, an issue with 911 of not being able to identify um, cell phone calls as well as landline call will this change that at all not really um, 
the technology that we have right now, we have to go by the latitude and longitude of the caller. And that's not anything that's, they are looking into improving the reliability of locations, but we're not at that point yet. Right, thank you. Other questions, comments? Oh, excuse me, go ahead. And I don't know, we, we're paying tech. He said something that's sparked something out in my mind, but this portion on that same sense from other individuals who shift to, um, to, to, to VoIP uh, telephone systems on voice over internet protocol for their, for their phone system, they're told even most times that when they call 911, oftentimes that they may not be able to get the address for the property because of, of it's not your standard landline. Does, with this system, does, is that still the same pretty still much for the them? Same thing. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. Go ahead. That is sparked <laughs> another question. <laughs> it did. It absolutely did. Um, my question is, okay, with, like with your phone, supposedly if you lose it or someone steals it, it can be located. Why doesn't it work this way? I may. Yeah. <laughs> That's a proprietary app yeah. that is developed and sold by the, the maker of the phone. So oh. if you lose one brand of phone, the other brand of phone can't find it. So that is a proprietary application. <coughs> Don't well, lose your phone. <laughs> if I may offer a fourth comment, I was in Chicago this weekend and my son uses Uber as a cab and he calls them and they know exactly where we are mm -hmm. for that very reason. So there certainly is technology that can identify where you are, and that's important with a 911 call. It may be some young child who just knows you're supposed to dial 911. Well, where are you? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, my daddy's here on the ground with a heart attack. So uh, that is important. Of course, it's important for the cab because he knows where to come get you. Uh, landlines really real easy because it's it's physically hooked to your to your home or business. Well, we can do that with the sale. It's just through the longitude and latitude. It's not through a GPS technology pretty much the way the phone app works. Yeah, okay, all right. Yes, sir. But that does not work the same for people who have VoIP household phones. Because yeah. with that, you're in your home and that's over the internet and you can't, if you call 911, you have to give your address because they can't identify where the house is through that phone call. A lot of the voice VoIP providers now are putting the home addresses of the, the subscribers in there. There are some that come through sometimes that do not and that's just a matter of them contacting Tom Warner, whoever their VoIP provider is, and having that corrected. Okay. All right. We've now gotten a lesson in <laughs> voice over internet. <laughs> Do we have a uh, move, move, motion? Move, move. We have a motion. Second. So we have a motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed likewise. We will now go to C8. Consideration of items related to architectural design services for recreation facilities. A, resolution authorizing an agreement with Steel Group Architects, PLLC, for professional architectural design services for the renovation of Winston Lake Park in the amount of $411,125. I'll also mention that was C8A, and C8B is the similar resolution for the Salem Lake architectural services. So there are actually two items here. And item C, 8C, is the architectural contract for um, Jameson Park, and there is actually one more, which is D, which is the architectural for the Quarry Park, which is in Southeast Ward. Southeast Ward. So there's actually four of them here. Miss Adams, you asked this before. I actually had a question too, but yeah. I'll let you go first. Thank you. Yeah, they just read. <laughs> but I want everybody to know C8 is actually four different parks, although they're all the, essentially the same resolution. Right. I read through it, uh, Mr. Garrity. Uh, and staff, and I know again we now have this uh, point allotment to determine based on the panel that here's the data and, and everything, the application, the proposal, whatever. I still have some uh, question or concern as to how do we verify the minority business piece of this. You know, I know that they say, and in their contract, and I don't know, Mr. Turner, if you're, you're probably the one, that how do we follow up? I, I, I'm not saying that they're lying to us, but I'm a, I'm a person that believes I need to know that this, is, this has been verified and can be verified versus us just saying it 
because this is a lot of money here, you know, so. They have to submit a sworn affidavit for how much MWBE participation or good faith effort they have made, and we will cross-check that as they submit the, whoever the firm that's selected and we successfully negotiate with will review their <laughs> affidavit against their actual billing to us as the project goes along to assure that they are using the MWBE consultants or subconsultants that they identify. So I know that's a, that's a that's paper and, and, and emails and whatever documentation, but do we, are we doing actually site on site, FaceTime, count the people, see what I see so that I as a a representative of the city of Winston-Salem, I can verify that X is using actual minorities in this contract, this bill. This is minority firms as yeah. opposed to minorities, so we will sort of, we will review their documentation of the indicated firm okay. to confirm that that firm is actually a MWBE. Okay. If that firm is indeed that MWBE, then they have successfully satisfied our requirements. Okay. We do not look at the individual employees of that firm. We go by the certification of that agent. Okay. So for instance, if you owned a firm, it would in all likelihood be both an MWB Correct. and a MWBE. Uh, and we would look for our, we would cross check that against our certification program to assure that a firm owned by you in this scenario was indeed part <laughs> was indeed certified as an MWBE. And if it was, then that company who claimed, who planned to use you would be able to claim legitimately that consultant well, as an MWBE. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Turner. I did. Um, questions, same in amount of question asked when this came as information in reference to looking at the actual um, firms that are listed here. Uh, particularly looking at the uh, MLA design group, which from, if I recall correctly, they were the ones who completed several of the master plans for us, particularly including the one at um, Winston Lake, correct? I don't recall who did the master plan. I would tell you that the firm did the master plan. We do know proposed, but um, their proposal was not as well done and didn't meet our objectives for the design as well as the firms were recommending to you. Um, and again, I, I believe that is the MLA design, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think that was who, who completed it. And I was just curious uh, whether or not the fact one, um, I, were we satisfied with master plans that were developed by them? As I understand it from recreation, we were satisfied with the master plan. The difference here is that designing activity and master planning activity are significantly I know you, you have the engineering and all of that piece that have to go into the specific, those, those portions of it, correct? Right. That are different from just master plan is more conceptual and, and then the actual that piece is more fine tuned on what will be used in construction documents and all that, correct? That's correct. Right. Um, and, and my only question was just wondering whether or not the fact of them being familiar with the project prior to, I know they got points for familiarity with the project and those kind of things and just that's a big gap in almost $100,000 between them and, and the one that uh, has been recommended by staff. Um, and so that just... Those aren't dollars. Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm looking at the money. I'm no, thinking of no. <laughs> points. Points. I, I thought it was more than that, uh, but the points, well, excuse me, even yeah. even still in terms of looking at the points, that there's roughly 100, 100 points in between uh, that um, that firm and the other, and just, uh, it's just an interesting thing to something, organization who's done the master plan and then seeing how they score here. Curious how we how that happened. Okay. If, could you get Mr. Montgomery? Because y'all have a spreadsheet that shows how many points they got for each category. Certainly do. We'll be happy. You, to provide you could provide that on uh, the Winston Lake one. Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like to compliment staff that we have selected. There's four different things, and all local firms are doing the work, including one of them is actually a minority firm that the general, mm -hmm. the general folks do. Anyway, uh, I do have one a general comment on all of them, and that is uh, my experience with architects. They're wonderful at what they do, but they sometimes have no conception of what things cost. Mm -hmm. uh, these will. 
but be sure they are well aware. Don't come in here in eight months and say, this is it, and it's twice what we had budgeted, because at the end of the day, we have to deliver on everything we said within a total budget. Yeah. I, my one big experience, uh, they came in, the actual cost for 50% higher than our budget. I mean, that's just, we're, this is a private project. So, yeah, well, anyway, any other questions or comments on these? Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed likewise. Uh, we have one more C11. Uh, you read this one, please. Resolution approving the federal fiscal year 2016 federal agenda for the city of Winston Salem. Ms. Adams, you asked this. Yes, uh, and I want to thank staff and Ms. Mazingo for getting us the data. And I kept seeing. Uh, the data is like for the nine years, all encompassing. I would be interested to see what we've done the past two to three years. I understand that, you know, and, and she can come up. Yeah. A lot. Thank you. I understand uh, that it's hard to follow the money as to how it comes to us. And we can kind of estimate, especially since some of the changes economically have happened. But I would be more interested if you could bring us or get us the data to show me for the past two years what have we gotten. In, in light of a bad economy and the way it's gotten with them getting us money for our projects. You know what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Leslie, could you give your name and address? I forgot to get that with Bob a minute ago. No problem. Uh, Leslie Mazingo, 4315 Woodburn Drive, Clemens, as well as 440 North Capitol Street in Washington, D.C. So, so Ms. Adams has asked for some recent history. Right, right for the last two years. Correct. And, and we can put that together. Um, the, uh, the biggest challenge in terms of the dollar for dollar is that there has been uh, a moratorium on earmarks. Earlier, when we first started this process, you could go in and you could get the line items and you could trail it very closely. Um, plus, that was just the way that they distributed the funds, as, as Council Member Adams has pointed out. Um, that has changed. We've had a moratorium now, you know, going on three years. So the numbers do change significantly, but I'm more than happy to provide that. Thank you. Move for approval. Second. Uh, we have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed mm -hmm. likewise. That passes. We will now go to the general agenda. Everybody will turn to the front of your books. There are four items here. We'll start with number one, if you'll read that, please. G1. Resolution authorizing additional financial assistance for previously approved revitalizing urban commercial area projects located at Southeast Plaza Shopping Center. Uh, after the last meeting, we were kind of bouncing all over the room on this, so I did chat with Mr. Garrity after the meeting and asked him to come back, and as you see in your book, is a specific, some specific buckets that we are, we've talked about pulling some money from. Uh, so, <coughs> Mr. Brooks, I'll let you go over that in a minute. And the other question, I don't know if it was answered in here, was have we ever done anything s similar to this? So if you just want to review first what's in our book, what are the sources you identified? Yes, good evening, Chairman Clark and members of council, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem. This item, of course, is a resolution authorizing additional financial assistance for the Southeast Plaza, Plaza investors, and at the last, at the November 10th meeting, you heard a presentation from Mr. Asasi where he was requesting an additional $900,000 for the shopping center. Uh, as part of that project, he also requested that the city provide an additional $1.3 million in the form of a RUCA forgivable loan. Then we gave the funds that had already been approved for the project, which you have here, which is 200,000 in low interest loan, two forgivable loans totaling 1.2 million, and an urban development action grant that's 250,000. Uh, the committee members requested some alternative options for funding the request, and we presented those in December, and those options were converting the existing low interest loans, which would be part of the RUCA and the UDAG, to forgivable loans, utilizing privileged license revenue funds from the sweepstakes businesses and transferring unused funds from other RUCA projects and then utilizing some of the Dale repayment money. 
So what we provided is how that uh, could be done. And first would be converting the remaining balance of the 200,000 low interest roof alone, which is approximately 172,000, and the 250,000 UDAG loan, which has a balance of approximately 233,000 to forgivable loans. That would amount to 405,000. Second would be to utilize 224,000 from the license revenue funds from the sweepstake businesses. The third would be to transfer unused funds from other RUCAs, including 50% of the remaining balances from the Peachtree War Town, which would be 300, and that amount is 393. 50% would be 196,500. And West Salem, that amount would be 38000 for a total of 234000 So the combination of those sources would provide an additional amount of 863500 Also, in exchange for this additional assistance, Southeast Plaza would donate approximately six acres of land that's immediately behind the shopping center, the exact acre acreage would be determined after a buffer is established in the land survey. And this land would be maintained by the city for recreational or open space purposes since it's located in the Winston-Salem watershed. So that's how we propose to provide the additional funds should you choose to uh, agree with that. Okay. Uh, and, and secondly, and I may be asking you this unprepared, do you know of any instances, and, and I'm adding this up, it's, it's about $2 million total, that, and, and these would all be eventually, I guess, be forgiven, of this type of order of magnitude for a development? Of this type project, no, I'm not. I'm not aware that we've done this before. Of course, the transferring land, we have done that on several different occasions, but providing this amount of funds for this type of project no, I can't recall that we have, that I'm aware of. Mr. Burke, and then Ms. Montgomery, and then we have other hands up. Go ahead. I have sat on this council, and I have voted for economic development. Now, with this particular project, I know you're going to talk about generating jobs and opportunities, but with this rook of money, we have other areas in this community who would like the same opportunity. Now, I would like to know the same thing you're going to do for the southeast are you going to do the same thing for Auburn Station? Because they have been out there struggling. They have been individuals, never asked the city for anything, and we're working with them. And we're going to take a private developer. There's a private developer out there. We're going to enhance that area. I would like to know, do we have any other RUCA projects in this community that we can afford the same opportunity that we're talking about the Southeast Plaza. I don't have any problems with the Southeast Plaza moving forward, but I think we need to be fair across the board. I think you can go and look at the minutes throughout the years. I've said if we're going to do for one, then we should do for the other. Do we have uh, the roof of projects that we have already on the book? Uh, any of them similar to the Southeast Plaza? We do have several current RUCA projects that are underway. The financing structure is not like what we are proposing here. The financing structure on those are designed as under the old RUCA guidelines where 50% low interest loan, 50% forgivable loan at some point would be forgiven. If I understand the question that you're asking, I, I believe what it would is to take a look at those individual loans and see what portions of those loans are forgivable loans and look at converting those for, you know, low interest loans, the portions that are low interest loans, and look at converting the low interest portion of those loans to some type of forgivable loan and or grant or a combination of the two. Councilmember Burke, yes. Ashley looked that information up earlier today and just haven't had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Brooks. But there are actually seven 
other loans that are outstanding that are currently amortizing that have a current value of $408,194 if you were to forgive those. So that would be what would be similar to this. So now, Mr. Brooks has said part of them are low interest, part of them are forgivable. Is that 408 just the low interest portion? That's the low interest portion. Okay, thank you. <coughs> uh, we had a lot of hands up. I'll just go ahead and take Mr. Montgomery. Yes, um, I start with saying that um, one, I think that what's said been stated already, I, I, I do not disagree with. The only thing that I would say in starting in is that there are other areas within the East Ward that are have been identified as RUCA areas that I would love to have additional dollars invested into, but what we don't have with some of those sites is a developer who is willing to step forward to put the money into those particular areas. If we had a developer in some of those sites that, that I know that I would love to see and the community would like to see, I'd be pushing gun ho to how do we make something happen equity for those sites. But I think the difference is with some of the other areas that we have is the fact that you have a partner who's willing to make the investment in the property um, and making investment above and beyond the investment that the city's been making within this process. And questions, and I bring these questions up just because of the line question that was brought at the very beginning. Um, well, step back on the, excuse me, the sweepstakes dollars that will be there, is that the balance of what's left in, in that uh, fund in terms of what we will be using this? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but in Mr. Page and, and Mr. Garrity, you all may be able to answer these other two questions uh, a little bit more. And it goes specifically to the line in terms of amount of dollars invested in other projects. Particularly, what has been the commitment to date that we have made um, within um, Innovation Quarter? Uh, sure. Number off my head is somewhere north of $10 million. And what is the commitment to date that we have made uh, with Brookstown Development? Somewhere north of 20, I guess 40 million. Uh, 20, 28. 28. 28 yeah. And how many jobs associated with each one of those particular projects? I know the invasion quarter will be dramatically different than the others, and I see that as a much larger piece. But on the other, how many jobs associated particularly with that? Because I, I see that the second question, that one is, in my opinion, is much closer to what we're looking at here. A community area is something that anchors a, a community, making an investment in that area so that it would have a residual effect on the surrounding community. And we, it, and in my opinion, I know that Ms. Brooks said in, ter in terms of this particular in the Ruka area, we haven't made an investment like that. But I would counter to say that I believe we have made investments in other areas similar to this just in different in a different type of project than what we're currently looking at in this okay. yeah just kind of following up on what councilman montgomery's point was making there is that um this is a large project but it's, it's crucial in that area james knows it much better than i do but it's really an anchor it's, it's going to be catalytic to to the whole area and just looking at it quickly it's, it's, it's producing an almost three to one uh, return on investment private sector dollar for public sector, so it's a, I think that's a pretty good return for it. I congratulate staff and, and Mr. Taylor for figuring out a way to package this together. Ms. White, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Uh, comment on the uh, third bullet point about transferring uh, unused funds from other RUCAs. Mm -hmm. I submit that that cannot happen in this rarefied atmosphere without consulting with those RUCAs to see if uh, there are plans in the works. And I know I've heard of, uh, uh, certainly with the West Salem, that uh, they still, uh, you know, want to be, have this money to work with other uh, um, businesses along that corridor so you know the other rukas have to be brought into this discussion at some point before we give their money away it, 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 they have to be a part of it I'm just going around tables I want to also speak to that I was served on the Peters Creek Community Initiative for several years and I know that their ruka was really I think thought of as quite successful they did a really good job and deployed most of the money and I think the results 
um, are pretty well uh, thought of. And their amount is not big, but there are a couple projects I know that they're teeing up to get started on and to lose that money without at least having a conversation with them about where are you in the process, is it going to be spent, I think would be unfair to them. Um, I guess my other, another question is, or my other concern is that the overall size of this and, and scale to the rest of our RUCA projects is, is huge. I mean, it's, it's just such a big shot that it almost seems like it needs a different style of, it, it doesn't seem like it should come out of the same pot as the Acadia, Washington Park area, the West Salem area. This, this seems like if there was another way to fund this other than RUCA, I would be much more comfortable. Yeah, I have two separate issues. Um, first, overall, I'm not um, uh, opposed to providing additional assistance to this development. I think it's done well so far, and I think there's uh, justification available for uh, improving our investment there. Um, however, that's with two caveats. Uh, one is is the point that uh, you know two of our colleagues have already spoken to, and that's taking funds away from uh, other rupees. Um, I cannot support a funding package that includes specifically taking half the remaining funds for the West Salem shopping center. I checked in with the, um, the community group that's uh, been helping coordinate that, Peters Creek Community Initiative. Uh, they had no idea this was going on. Uh, they are continuing to work on development in that area. Uh, they have represented <coughs> here if anybody has specific questions for them. But uh, for me to vote in favor once this gets to council, that 38000 has cut has to come out of the bank. Um, uh, I'm, I'm certainly less familiar in detail with Peachtree Walltown, uh, uh, Ruka. I'm sure that uh, Councilmember uh, Taylor can uh, can address that since that's in the southeast area. Um, the other question is a broader question, uh, and again, this is not an objection uh, to the proposal, but a request uh, for additional detail uh, in the terms of any agreement. Um, uh, I think that uh, we need to recognize that we're we should compare apples to apples in terms of where our investment gets. Um, uh, Innovation Quarter investment is a net job producer for the area because we're talking about bringing in additional um, uh, development to the area over and above the funds that are already circulating here. Uh, this is a retail and services uh, project. It's important to the area of the community served. It does not produce, uh, I would argue, net additional jobs for the community, so it needs to be evaluated uh, using a different set of criteria. Uh, and one of those is, is it bringing in uh, the services to the area the community served that we want there? You don't want, for example, a more internet sweepstakes operation uh, in an area, even though that would bring in uh, revenue uh, to the investors. Um, what you want to do is in encourage things like one of the specific items that Mr. Izazi referenced in his previous presentation, uh, and that is uh, a dental practice for the area. But that's not included anywhere in the terms of the resolution. We need to make sure that that kind of thing is specified. And I think to, uh, to put that into effect, we also need to be more specific about what parts of the proposed development uh, our additional funding would go towards. Um, the the $1.3 million requested goes for a lot of proposed work uh, renovating facilities at the shopping center. Uh, I think we need to include in a, an agreement that we put together and approve um, more specificity about what parts of the improvement our funding goes to. Because what, what's proposed in this package doesn't fund the whole package that uh, Southeast Plaza uh, is asking for. It would fund a part of it. Now having you know, uh, toured uh, the proposed improvements, uh, I think that it's, it's clearly possible to separate out what parts you do first with what money is available. And we should include in what we're funding the areas that are uh, going to be immediately usable for additional facilities needed to serve that part of the community like the proposed dental cell. I think it's e not easy. I think it's possible to do these things, but I think they need to be in the agreement and would ask that you know, that be worked on between now and the time that we finalize. Ms. Burke. Yes, I was going to mention it's nice that we're going to get um, six acres of land 
And these six acres of land, we're talking about it being a, like a park. Well, we're going to have to pay for the upkeep of the park. It's not really. And I want someone to better explain to me just this land, what we propose to do, how much money we're going to invest in that six acres of land. Because if you say it's worth uh, 141000 the value of it, but then after we buy, after we get it from him, it will be important, Mr. City Manager, for us to know definitely through the recreation, what kind of recreation facilities are we talking about and how much <coughs> it's going to take to keep it. Yes, thank you. Um, you want to be right? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, it's open. Keep going. Okay. Um, I basically hit on some of the same things some of the other council members have said. Uh, I agree with some and I disagree with others. Uh, one of the things that I'm concerned about is we give grants and money to a lot of organizations and people and businesses and developers, and the list is very long. But there are buckets of money out there that we give to people, like it's like a credit line. And the money never gets used, but we don't never hear anything about it because we don't get the updates. There are nonprofit organizations and others out there that they've been sitting on this, these monies for a while to do economic development. My thing is, they should have a timeline just like developers or anybody else. If they don't use the money within a certain length of time, there need to be follow up from the city and our staff that are assisting them. How do we move your project along? Much like what we got into with Ruka from the, how do we? make sure whatever it is that they petitioned us for that it happens and if it doesn't happen what needs to happen but i would be interested mr page and mr brooks to find out those agencies that we have allotted money out of previous budgets that the money is just there and it's not being used and i'd like that dispersed also to the other council members uh, just like what councilmember mcintosh said it's no more different than how we do the uh, funding of nonprofits every year budget time. We have more debate about that than we do about how do we pay our employees to do what they do every day for everybody. I would like to see something put in another, yes, policy procedure guideline process. What's the difference? We now have to, to distinguish between a RUCA and the next level. Once we got the RUCA off the ground and it's successful and it's doing some things, we now need another piece in there for people or projects like the Southeast Plaza because that's what we want. No different than a small business. We want them to be successful, but we, great idea, but we haven't gotten to that point yet, but now we're at that point. So staff, uh, Mr. Garrity, we need to start crafting some guidelines what the next step is for our RUCA projects. Also to Council Member Burke's point, I would be interested in knowing the value of the six acres of land on the market value right now. Again, if the six acres are worth whatever, and, and I mean based on real estate prices and whatever, I'd be interested in that because if it's only worth, let's say, ten, fifteen thousand dollars, and we got to spend a whole lot to upkeep, as Ms. Burke said, then that really isn't a win-win for us, and it's really not an incentive. It should just be part of the deal if we vote to approve this. Thank you. Mr. Taylor, I'm sorry I skipped over you. There are so many comments that have been made. I, I'm almost uh, leery about where to start. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep this brief as possible. I'll start by saying that, you know, Councilman Montgomery and I share this area, and this particular project is just important to this area as the baseball stadium is, uh, to Councilmember McIntosh's area, or to the innovation quarter is, uh, to downtown and several other specific sites. I will say it started off as the Revitalizing Urban Commercial Areas Program. And I think the money that was allocated definitely went towards uh, what should be done. I would venture to say that this has been uh, the most, one of the most successful RUCA projects in the history of the city of Winston-Salem, which puts it in a different light. As the mayor has mentioned, you know, the developer came to the table and we met him and we said, look, we want to do a public-private partnership and we want this to work. He didn't come to us begging to get into business. I came to him. We came to him and several other developers looking to make this partnership work. The partnership has worked, but we need just a little bit more uh, money and effort to push it over the top. Uh, we've seen a three to one investment on our dollars. And one of the things that has, is not mentioned here, we're, the total additional assistance looks like about $863,000, uh, 
but the developer is coming to the table again as a partner and putting in more of his own money into the project. Uh, as far as Councilmember Best is concerned, I think that we could add a little bit more specificity about how and where the money will be spent. I'm okay with that. I don't think there's any reason to hold this project. Uh, I will say, as to the concerns of the three council members here, Council Member Light, Council Member McIntosh, Council Member Bessie, if there are concerns about how the $38,000 from the West Salem RUCA project is being spent, I'm sure the developer is willing to move forward by removing those funds out of it if you have another project. As far as the Peachtree Walltown area, that's another area that we worked on. One of the folks who were in the deal actually passed away. So that money has been sitting and the development has kind of come to a halt. We're still looking to do some things, but I think <coughs> taking half the money, uh, 393,000, taking $196,000 out of that money, moving it just a little bit further up the street, up Walltown to Southeast Plaza is something that's viable. I'm okay with that. I, I will say, Councilmember Burke, you know, I, I think we're seeing some, some things moving over in Arbor Station. Uh, we definitely support that. We support all the other RUCA programs. Before I touch on that, it's important to point out that the money from this RUCA program is not the money that was improved in the bond referendum. This is a previously allocated RUCA denomination, and we're just going back and taking old money and putting it to a, a new use. That's also opportunity for other RUCAs to come to the table with the money that was allocated through the bond referendum. So this is the end all be all. Arbor Station is moving. But Councilman Burke, I hate to see this project be at a standstill, uh, kind of held hostage while we're looking at other projects. I think there's definitely an opportunity to support Augur Station. I'll continue to do that as we move forward. But I hope that we don't look at other projects and hold this one hostage. So with that being said, I'm okay. If I was on the, uh, on the Finance Committee, I would make the motion. But I would ask that we remove the $38,000, uh, that we add a little bit more specificity. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to touch was parks and recs. There's a six acre site a little bit over $100,000. If people are concerned with the amount of money that could be spent there on a rec facility, I've had uh, recently over the last couple of weeks, uh, Councilman Montgomery and myself, there was a uh, soccer league that approached us that wanted to do a soccer league there. There's something that doesn't cost a whole lot and the soccer league could possibly You're talking pick about the landing question here. The landing oh. question. The, po the soccer league could possibly pick up any costs that are associated with uh, maintaining that facility. So we don't want to put anything in place that adds more uh, to the bottom line. But there is definitely an opportunity. The developer has put up his money, he's putting up land, and I think it's something that will continue to move the southeastern and the eastern portions of the city forward. So I'd ask that you don't stifle this project, that we move it forward as presented with uh, the adjustments that I just discussed. Okay, any other comments, questions, Mr. Montgomery? Uh, do, when we approved the dollars initially for these particular areas, was there was not a timeline on how long they had to spend the money, or it was just, you got whenever the project gets done kind of thing? I don't believe there was a timeline. No, there, there was not a timeline no. associated with that. And so I am aware of the fact that with other dollars that have been out there in the past that we have gone back to organizations and say, hey, either you, you use it or you lose it. Um, and so I think one of the questions and concerns here is that these organizations <coughs> hadn't had the opportunity to say, this is where we are in the process and, you know, their timeline may be a little further out than what we're looking towards, but I do think that we do need to put a standard in place in terms of performance standard on timeline for organizations so they can know. And it doesn't mean like we've done with others, they get to come back and say, hey, this is where we are, this is where economic conditions stand, we need an extension on our time to do our development. We've done that in the past with other organizations, but at least to make sure that groups know that you don't have to infinity to complete a project, but the reason we're doing this is we want to see as quickly as possible investment happen, but we want to see the right type of investment happen in that area. So that would be one thing I, I would would suggest, and I don't know if, if it's now at this moment we do that, but that it, there needs to be, and I know we're going to be taking within the next question about how we um, use the, the, the current dollars of RUCA, and that will be something specific that I will <coughs> want us to make sure that that is a part of what we do moving forward, that there is a, a, a performance timeline that we associate with those RUCA areas moving forward. And, um, and so... Thank you, Council Member. And on some projects, we have started doing that, and we'll incorporate that more on projects coming forward. Okay, Ms. Oh, Burke. Yes, I was going to say um, I would never want to hold anything in hospitals. I just want us to be clear about how I think we ought to be fair across the board. Now, in looking at this particular project, and I will say, and I've been in communication with the city manager, 
we have not managed as well as we ought to be managing tax dollars when we we should be like a bank this plan with this money not being real serious with people that we're working with uh, through his directions I can see that we're a little more sophisticated in how we're working with these with these citizens I'm sure I know Mr. Sausage when we go back I've seen him do developments this has nothing to do with him he's a businessman and I feel that he's a good businessman but I'm saying there are some things that we need to be doing with our firm and any of the other people with the Ruka money that we can say to them when they come to the table, these are some opportunities that we would like to present to you. Okay. Um, as a chair, I'm trying to listen and come up with uh, you know, a camel with a horse designed by a committee. I think they're all saying. Oh, Dan, did you have something? Oh, yes, excuse me. Uh, go ahead. Why? Um, I just wanted to, to comment. I, I think that, uh, that the points have been made about the need for uh, accountability and uh, uh, the importance of timelines are, are well uh, made points yeah. um, and that's why I checked with the, the folks who were doing work in the West Salem area yeah. before I you know, heard that objection publicly and you know, work has been done in that area it's looked good um, and more work is ongoing so I, I think that's an example of where we don't want to pull money out um, uh, and I would just like to speak in support of Councilmember Taylor's suggestion uh, pull that 38,000 out of the package uh, and uh, work on those additional specificity terms uh, and, and move it forward. Yes, ma'am. I move that we accept the resolution authorizing the further financial assistance for the Southeast Plaza with the added changes of removal of the 38,000 and more specific language as to what the City of Winston-Salem's funds will be. Second. Towards the project. Okay, so, hang on a minute, I've lost Mr. Garrity. <laughs> Ms. Gary, I think the, the motion that has been second is to is what is in the book. We're going to take out the thirty eight thousand from West Salem and we're going to try to be more specific in the resolution as right. far as specifically what the money is being used for, uh, and this, that and the other. We need to, and we need to get that before next Monday, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Is the motion to second? Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? And I'm going to abstain on this. And I'm going to abstain. So we have two abstentions. Yes. Two in favor? Zero opposed and two abstentions. And Mr. Chairman, with the understanding the things that I mentioned to be the city manager bringing me some information back. Yes, mm -hmm. Ms. Brooks asked for additional information. Okay, uh, folks, we're at quarter till. We have several items to go, so we may be stopping. We not, may not get everything in. And uh, Mr. Bonham, I see you here. I will certainly save some time at the end to be sure we get to your comments. Uh, item G2. Uh, General fund forecast for the fiscal years 2014-2015 and 2015-2016. Before you start, let me just okay. comment. G3 and G4 have to do with Ruka and Turn. You can you can hold information. How about the resolution on the bond fund? Is that is it that in consent? It was on consent. Okay. But three and four could be held if you want. We may help hold three and four, but I do want to get to this is kind of a budget outlook and then we'll get to the item the citizen is here about. Sorry. And y'all have this at your place. Yeah, do and it'll be on the screen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Chairman Good afternoon. Clark, Mayor Joins, Vice Chair Adams, members of council. I promise to gingerly step you through this. Take any questions that you may have, but uh, this is mainly informational purpose at this point in time. And this is the estimated year in fiscal year 2014 2015 and a preliminary look at 2016. We're going to start here with our year in fiscal year 2014. As you see in this slide, we had budgeted approximately 7.3 million in fund balance actual use of fund balance was 1.2 million justification for that of course is you see there uh, revenues were a little higher expenditures were a little lower uh, the driving factors here we look at the revenue side first uh, were property taxes and license and permits came a little higher than budgeted on the expenditure side our supplies and services were much lower budget. 
here. I think you may have seen this slide before prior years. This is our fiscal year 2014 year, year in general fund balance as compared to 2013. The piece that I'd like to highlight here is the council approved fund balance policy that was implemented in fiscal year 2014, where you assigned a minimum unassigned fund balance of 12.5% to equate it to 22.5 million. Now we'll move on to our fiscal year 15 estimate. Uh, this is our year end, and as you see here, we had budgeted approximately 4.3 million in fund balance. Uh, we have an estimated fund balance use of 2.3 million, and the majority of that, actually all of that, is actually, um, again, due to right now at this point in time, this is a conservative estimate, with our expenditures in a little lower, uh, revenues as budget, we kept it very conservative. Uh, that use of fund balance is predominantly one-time capital expenses, items such as if we have work order management system, uh, these are just a few examples, um, grant to family services, roof repair, uh, and a few other expenses associated with the bond referendum. So, and there are others. I do have a list if you needed that, I could get that to you. Now we move ahead to our projected fiscal year 2016 budget. Right now, and again, conservative estimate, we're looking at uh, revenues at 177.2 million. Two million of that is fund balance usage. Uh, we have a gap right now of 1.2 million, and the reasons for that, we'll move on to the next slide. Hang on one second, Trevor. I just wanna note that's the best the lowest gap we've yeah. seen in many years. So. The new finance chairman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> and the drivers behind this, uh, we'll look at the revenue side first. As you all are very well aware, we have the elimination of our business privilege tax uh, revenue, which will go into effect July 2015, and that's 2.3 million approximately. Uh, also, we're looking at slight growth in real property and registered motor vehicles. Uh, sales tax, we're assuming a 4% growth there. Uh, and the increase in utility franchise taxes, beer, wine, maybe food store, and the decrease in the funding from the governor's highway safety program, DWI task force. On the expenditure side, the large one is the $1.7 million increase in employee compensation, and again, we assume the 2% uh, benefit, merit side of it, that includes benefit, but this does not include the market adjustment. It's not having market adjustment at this point in time. Um, move forward down the list, we have the Bryce Stewart Municipal Building savings, rent savings from the purchase of this building. Uh, also, we can move ahead and look at the decrease and again, this is, this is an estimate, it's in the fuel of $500,000. You'll see this in, a, in another slide later on down the road. That, uh, again, that's an estimate. Also, we have an increase in contractual services. I'd like to highlight the police services, body cameras, crime lab, I think it was in the paper just recently, and also replacement of tasers. And the last one was the decrease in transfers to other funds, particularly the phase one electronic plan review project. What you see here is our external factors with potential budgetary impacts. The first one, state tax reform. This is what I was mentioning in the prior slide. Uh, we're looking at a loss privilege license of 2.3 million. Um, we're also looking at uh, potential redistributing of local option sales tax collections on a per capita basis versus point of sale. Uh, increasing in sales tax base, this can we don't know what the impact of this is gonna be. This would be items such as uh, concert entertainment or movies, things of that nature. And what I'd mentioned earlier, the economic factors, potential related fuel costs. This particular chart, I think this has also been presented before, uh, shows the effect of the 2.5% tax increase, which is associated with the $139.2 million voter-approved bond referendum. 
and this is over time, what we'd be looking at for that particular fund, debt service fund. And again, this is a forecast, so it may change. Here we have the impact on the tax bills. And we can just look at uh, the effect of that 2.5% tax rate increase based on a $100,000 home. Annual impact, you're looking at $25. Uh, monthly, it's approximately $2.08 versus a quarter of a million dollar home. You're looking at annual impact, $62.50, which equates approximately for monthly cost of five point five dollars and twenty one cents. This is a look at the preliminary budget calendar. Uh, a few points I'd like to highlight. We have the March date to March, potentially April. Uh, other things I'd like to highlight is the finance committee workshops are at four thirty and we have those May twenty eighth, also June June second. Uh, the public hearing on June the fourth, which is at seven. Uh, another piece I'd like to highlight down that list is on Monday, June the 8th, the Public Safety Committee will have an opportunity to review the public safety budgets, uh, police, fire, and emergency management. And we're hoping for adoption by Monday, June 15th, along with the public hearing. So there's Mr. Carmen, you, you come back there to it. Uh, I have two questions that are kind of in your bailiwick. One is you sent us an email concerning a recent court decision on sweepstakes. My, my question from a budget standpoint, because I do know we do get a fair amount of money from that each year, how, if anyone has a feel for how much that would be and what the status is. And then number two, I thought that the leaders in Raleigh said they were willing to sit down and talk this year about this business license. I mean, because every city is different that type. Can you comment on both of those to the extent you can? As to the sweepstakes dollars at this point, I think we should consider that to be um, no longer in our revenue right. uh, source. Um, Do you, does anyone in the room know what that is on an annual basis? I think it was a little more than half a million. Half a million, okay. It, it, it is included in the privilege license tax, so we assume we wouldn't get any of it. Okay, anyway. all right, so it's already in there. Okay, excuse yeah. me, go ahead. I think based upon the court case, basically, we will not do those dollars anymore. Okay. Based upon the fact that we no longer can get um, but as to the other, in terms of replacement revenue, at this point, I would not be optimistic about replacement revenue. Based on what I heard in um, I don't know. If I will say we do have, matter of fact, the council members actually have our little packet here. We are meeting with our Raleigh representatives. January 26th. Yeah, in a couple of weeks. And that will certainly be one of the many things we will chat with them about that morning. I don't know if any of the other council members who went to the league meeting. Anyway, well, anyway, those are yeah. Yeah, creative. kind of legal issues, but uh, you're our liaison with, with Raleigh. Any questions on the presentation? Yes, sir. Mr. Montgomery. Uh, I'm going to put uh, wrote some notes. Um, questions on the um, terms of the uh, increase in the sales tax what collection. Page on? I'm on page six. Page six. Uh, there that shows the roughly plus a million dollars. How conservative or do, are, are we being on that number in terms of of where we are with that growth. Is that a realistic expectation of, of growth there? Yes, it is realistic. It is conservative. Okay. Um, and looking, um, the uh, the unknown portion in terms of uh, impact from the, the increase in the sales tax piece, I think Council Member Clark, did, in, in asking that question, hit the question I was going to ask in reference to that. But what it specifically goes back to is more of a statement in the sense that uh, you negate the $2.3 million that goes away from the privileged license and uh, based upon what our uh, what our gap is currently, we would actually be above uh, the current, our forecast would have us above if the state had not changed the, the privileged license in tax, correct? Correct. Is the newspaper here? <laughs> okay, Mr. Mr. McIntosh. When, or when do we do a revaluation process? Or when does the county do that? 2016? 2016. So that's, we don't have that baked into this. No. 2016, would that actually be collected in 2017? Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Mine was about the revaluation of the property. Since they lowered property so much, it's 
especially East of 52, what effect does this have on folks? We, ad we adjusted Councilman Burke when, when they did that back in 2013 uh, when it, in, with the impact we adjusted the property tax rate we had to raise the rate if you remember so that we get the same amount of income as before I would expect that with the next revaluation that some of that value based on current market sales will come back probably not all but some of it will come back and then the council will have to decide typically our policy has been at that point we would lower the rate again to, to give relief and not bring in any more money than we would either way. Mr. Real Estate Man, what's the market going to do pretty soon? Our prediction is going to be good. I and felt that. We're going up. I felt that, and I'm praying and hope so, because it's been tough. Any other questions or comments as far as this budget update? We appreciate it, and we will get another update Thank and you. more details as we get closer to the budget season. Yes. Uh, I am postponing the, the last two items, the RUCA and the turn because those are have to do with the bond money we can defer that a month mr. bottom you put your name on the list to speak if you'd like to come up to the microphone and if you gave your name and address for the record and I'll give you uh, three minutes so you can come in yes thank you chair uh, good afternoon my name is Jimmy Bonham I'm, I live at uh, 1617 14th Street of course that's in our best city uh, I'm here today because it's incumbent upon me to inquire about the eligibility of our business relocation assistance. The last time I was here, uh, I think this committee charge or tasked the city attorney to see if we, that is the Wilson Bob and Beauty Shop, that was a dislocated business here in our city, was eligible for its relocation assistance. As of today, I have not heard back from the city attorney's office in regards to her speaking with HUD as it relates to our uh, relocation assistance or being eligible for relocation assistance. I have heard from the city business development office and they requested <coughs> some information from us and therefore we had presented the information in which they requested from us to them been about 30 days ago. So we are still somewhat concerned uh, because, again, our business was taken through an urban plan, a HUD project. Uh, I, we feel as though we're still eligible for our relocation assistance for dislocated business. And uh, we just want to know what the status of that is and what we can do to get that project uh, completed. This is our prayer. And we. Uh, look to hearing from you all, working with you all, to get our business reestablished. Okay. Uh, if I'll just point to staff if you could uh, convey back to the council, Mr. Bonham, in writing whatever the status is or what you've learned or whatever. Maybe. Okay. Uh, we will uh, end on time, and uh, public safety is the next committee, and it will start in five minutes. Public safety will begin at 6.05. 6.05. Thank you all very much. We are adjourned.